Welcome back to Firestorm Games. In this video, we'll be showing you how to magnetize your Knight Castellan and Knight Valiant miniatures to make them both easy to store and easy to switch around their weapon options. The first area to magnetize is the waist joint, as this will allow us to break down the miniature into two smaller parts for ease of storage, as well as giving us some articulation as well. Start off by assembling the components in the same way that I've done here. Keeping component C5 separate and assembling only A41, C41 and C4. At the moment we don't have anywhere to affix the magnet to, so we need to create some sort of support structure. This can be done by clipping off a small section of sprue from your Knight Castellan kit. I would also recommend cutting away those struts so you're left with a straight bar. You'll next want to compare the length of sprue so that it fits inside of the Knight. Once you have a rough idea as to where to cut, use a pair of clippers to cut it down to size. Once cut, you can then use a hobby file to sand down the edges to make sure they're flat. Once the two sides of the bar have been sanded down, you then want to do a test fit to make sure that it fits inside of the torso. If it doesn't yet fit, then just keep on sanding, but do periodically check the fit to make sure you haven't made it too small. Once you are happy with the fit, we then need to make sure that the height of the bar is correct. But before we can do this, we first of all need to glue one of our neodymium magnets to component C5. The magnets that I'm using for this joint are 5mm in diameter and 2mm in thickness, which should be strong enough to hold the full weight of the knight together. And remember, as these magnets are metal, you'll need to use a super glue. By placing an additional magnet to the one that we glued in the last step, we can get a good idea as to how high the bar should be. Press down on both components simultaneously to ensure that the position is correct. Once you are happy with the position of the bar, you can then go ahead and glue it in place. With the strut in place, we can now place our additional magnet on top of the magnet that we glued to component C5, followed by some super glue to the top side as well. You can then go ahead and place the ball joint into the socket, which means if you place your bar correctly, the top magnet that we applied some super glue should be sitting flush against the bar. Hold these components in place, applying some pressure so that the glue dries with a strong fit. And now you have your magnetized waist joint. You should find that when you place a torso on top of the waist, you can spin it around as well as removing it freely. The next areas to magnetize are the arms, and for this we want to start off by clipping away the small lip on components A14 and A13. Once this is done, you can then file them down to create a smooth surface. Once filed down, you can then glue components A13 and A14 together. We then want to superglue a 4mm by 1mm size neodymium magnet to the end. This will serve as the pivot and breakaway point for the arms weapons. With the first magnet in place, we need to decide how we can affix the second magnet to component A11. Again, you'll want to create a supporting bar using a spare piece of sprue. Make sure that you add the second magnet to the top of the one that we've already glued into place to make sure that the position that we apply our sprue is in the correct place. After your dry fitting, you may need to cut down the piece of sprue to size to make sure that it fits between components A11 and A10. I would recommend doing a dry fitting before you glue any components into place, just to make sure that everything fits inside. Once you are happy that everything fits into place, you can then glue the extra piece of sprue inside component A11. After allowing the glue to dry, you can then fix components A10 and A11 together. At the moment, our second magnet is still outside of the joint, so much like we did for the waist, place the second magnet on top of the first one, along with a small dot of superglue to the top side. Then bring in your second set of components and press them together. Providing your sprue is in the right place, the magnet should be glued to it. After allowing the glue to dry thoroughly, you should then be allowed to freely pivot and also remove the weapons from your knight's arms. Just remember that you will need to repeat this process on the second set of arms as well. The next area to magnetize are the shoulder mounted weapons, so start off by taking component A16 and applying a small dot of superglue to the center hole. This hole is just big enough to place a 2mm by 1mm neodymium magnet inside. Hold the magnet in place until the glue has dried, and this magnet will serve as our anchor point for our weapon options. To magnetize our Siege Breaker cannons, you'll first of all need to take component A44 and clip away the small knob. Once removed, flip the component over and use a 2mm drill bit inside a pin vise to drill out the remaining stub. 
You will need to make sure that this is in the exact center of the component, but there should be a small marking to indicate where to drill. With the hole drilled, we can now apply our magnets, but before we do, we first of all need to make sure that our polarity is correct. There's nothing worse than affixing your magnets to two separate components, only to find you you've made a mismatch in their pole alignment. So be sure to check this first before doing any gluing. Once you are happy with your alignment, you can then go ahead and glue the magnet in to the base of the Siege Breaker cannon. Once the glue is dried, the two components should be able to spin and also be broken apart freely. Once this is done, you can then go ahead and assemble both Siege Breaker cannons following these same steps. Just remember to get those polarities correctly aligned. If you want to magnetize your Shield Breaker missiles, you'll first of all want to clip away the small nub from component A35. You can then use your 2mm drill bit to drill a 1mm depth hole in the base of the component. Into this newly drilled hole, you can then place another 2mm by 1mm neodymium magnet. Providing you got the polarities correct, you should be able to easily detach and attach the various shoulder weapon options to their base plates. The final area is to magnetize are the two melter weapons that sit just below the carapace. Now before you start magnetizing these components, you'll first of all need to assemble them, but not attach them to the carapace just yet. Start off by using your pin vise to widen the hole on the melter gun's bracket. Then you can glue into this hole another 2mm by 1mm magnet. You can then tackle the sensor array in a similar way for the shield breaker missile platform. Start off by removing the small knob with a pair of clippers and then drilling a 2mm by 1mm deep hole. Into this hole you can then place a 2mm by 1mm magnet which is in the same polarity as the bracket that we glued earlier. Once the components have dried you should then find that the components sit nicely inside the carapace mounts. You should then be able to freely attach and attach the weapon options whilst also being able to spin the weapons around as well. And so that concludes this episode of the Hobby Table on magnetizing your Knight Castellan. Now whilst I use the Castellan in this video, you could apply the same techniques to the Valiant as well. However, you will need to change some of the component references from C's to B's. Now you can pick up a Knight Castellan on the Firestorm Games web store for £90, as well as the magnets and other components that I use in this video as well. And you'll find web store links to both the Knight Castellan and also the magnets in the description below. Now if you enjoyed this video, please do let us know in the comments below, and also make sure you subscribe to be kept up to date with all of our latest Hobby Table videos. So for everyone here, we just want to say a big thank you for tuning in and watching this video, and we hope to see you again on Firestorm Games.